This has been powerful. Amen. How many of you have been enjoying what you've been hearing so far? Uh, somebody just shout, revival is here. Revival is here. You know, about seven years ago, I was living in North Carolina in a warm, nice climate. Minding my own business, doing uh, prophetic itinerant travel uh, for some years. And the Lord spoke to me at that time. And he said, you've got to leave where you are and you've got to move to Minnesota. And I said, Lord, why would you send me to Minnesota? I don't even know anybody in Minnesota. And I think I, there was one person that I ended up knowing in Minnesota. But uh, when the Lord told me this, I said, God, this has got to be crazy. This is the craziest thing that you've ever told me to do. And so, of course, I had to do it. So I left everything there. Uh, I thought I could pastor that church and the new church that I was doing. But when I went to Minnesota, the Lord spoke to me. He said, something is going to happen here in Minneapolis that is going to spark revival that would go throughout the nation. And so when I got to Minneapolis, I started sharing this prophecy in every church that I went to, uh, everybody that I met. The Lord said revival is going to start here. And they said, how could revival start in Minneapolis? This doesn't make sense. And so, of course, we started doing all night prayers. Anybody remember all night prayers? So we were praying from uh, evening all the way into the next morning. And the Lord said to us every month, we are to do strategic and prophetic apostolic decrees over our city and over our state. So we started doing spiritual mapping. And fast forward till now, uh, I live 10 minutes away from where George Floyd was killed. And so when it happened, uh, our church and so many other churches uh, jumped and went out into the streets. And as we went into the streets, because all of the stores were burned down in that area, stores that I shop at were burned down, we had to go to the suburbs and start buying food from there. We were spending thousands a day to bring food into the community because they had no stores. And it's something about giving that opens the heart of people. And so the more we gave, people said, we don't just want food. We want prayer. Right. And so we started praying for people right there on the street. And all of the churches there uh, got the same idea. And everybody went out and began to do this. And so we started to see a spontaneous revival just erupt right there on the streets in Minneapolis where people started getting saved. This moved to the very street where George Floyd was killed. And of course, you know, because you've seen the headlines, but the Lord began to tell me this revival that we're in right now, it is not the same as what we've seen before. You've heard about Pensacola. You've heard about Brownsville. You've heard about Azusa, but God said to me, this ain't that. He said, those revivals have their limitations. And those revivals had one face, but I want you to understand that where we are now, we are seeing a faceless revival. It has no one that's that's leading it at the center, but this is a move of the spirit that the church is leading together. Somebody shout together. And so when I heard that this is a faceless revival, the Lord said to me, don't put limitations on how uh, I'm going to move in this. And so I remember going out to the street there, and as I was worshiping in front of the baptismal pool. Nobody was being baptized. I wasn't on a schedule to do anything, but all of a sudden, just because I was standing there, somebody gets saved in the crowd, and then one after another after another, and so we started doing spontaneous baptisms right there, hundreds and thousands of souls uh, that we've seen come to Christ since the beginning of this thing, and then something interesting happened. The Muslim community saw this going on. And so they started gathering around because in their communities, I look like them. And so the Lord will use anything. And so they saw me baptizing people and they said, what are, what, what are you doing? And so the anointing was so strong on the street that the spirit of prophecy jumped on us. And we started prophesying to the Muslims that were there on the street. And they could not deny the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the kind of church prophecies like you're going to another level and things are going to get well. But when we begin to move in this spontaneous prophetic, this evangelistic prophetic, it's coming with accuracy where they will not be able to deny that this could not have come from you. But this must have come from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I was standing there ministering to one Muslim man and the Lord said to me, you've got an uncle and your uncle has a heart issue that he's been dealing with. He said, how do you know my uncle? Well, I don't know him, but I'll tell you the man that knows your uncle. And so he said, there's no way possible that you could know this. And so then the press came and I think I got 
about 30 seconds left. So then the press came and, and CNN and everybody was out there. And, and we had people that were part of the press that came up with tears in their eyes. And they said, we're trying to stay unbiased, but we've been seeing this happen and we want to get baptized. And so I'm telling you that what God is doing in this day, it cannot be housed in the four walls of the church. And this is the very reason why God has allowed the pandemic because the pandemic had to get us out of our four walls and get us on the streets where we should have been the entire time. And so the church is not diminishing, but you've got to hear this prophetic word that the church is not diminishing. We are growing stronger. The church is not diminishing. We just left the four walls and now we're about to invade every system of this world. And we will see the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. So I'll leave you with this prophecy. The Lord says for many of you that have come here today that you will go back to your cities and to your regions and you will take revival with you. You will go back to your cities and your regions. And the Lord said it is not just revival, but I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that it is revival, it is awakening, and it is reformation at the same time. And God says you will know that there is a convergence happening in the spirit. And the Lord says that the streams are beginning to mix right now in the spirit. And no longer will you see companies only in their own corners. But God says that now I will cause the company of prophets to come together. And I will cause black prophets to come together with white prophets. And I will cause Asian prophets to come together.